In this video, you'll learn about how to create snapshot memories for the broadcast picks switcher. These can provide a quick way to recall a complicated setup that utilizes multiple keys. In this example, we're going to build a double box shot. To do this, we'll begin by bringing in some pre-designed artwork that matches our show's on-air design from Still Store 1. With Still Store 1 now in program, it's time to layer the video sources. We'll begin by assigning a camera to Kier 4. In this case, I want camera 3 to be assigned to Kier 4, and since it already is there, no further change is necessary for the key assignment. I need to also then turn on Direct Key 4 so I can accurately see what I'm doing as I build my look. That brings up the camera, but over top of my still store due to my Kier priority settings. There's nothing wrong with that, but I do want to see the background, so the way I reveal that without cropping my camera's framing is to turn on the Digital Video Effect or DVE while I still have Kier 4 selected. Now my camera shot is smaller. I can then further adjust its X and Y position by using the joystick, and if I rotate the knob on the joystick, I can make the video source, and ultimately Kier 4, smaller or larger until I get it positioned and sized the way I like on the screen. Do these same steps again for the second video source. In this case, I would position the next source to the right of the one I just set up. Now it's time to save this information. To do that, I'll turn off the direct keys and instead simply preview the keyers using the buttons next to the T-bar, then select my memory bank and tap controls to bring up the memory save button. From there, just follow the prompts according to what you want to do. You can further customize the look of a button by opening up the Broadcast Picks Draw Picks application. Once you are satisfied with the customized look of your button, you can save it. To assign it to your new memory or macro, simply edit your show and select Edit Show Settings, Macros, View All Macros to extend the list of available memories, and with your specific memory highlighted, click Rename Macro. Uncheck the Use Name on Picks button option, and instead point it to the location of the artwork you previously created by clicking on Custom. Select the appropriate file and click OK, then save the show. You are done. The new name will now display with that memory. Think about each key movement and create further memory instances for each. For example, you may want to have an option to grow and shrink each of the keyed video sources as a part of that two-box look. These must be pre-built before you begin a live show. Remember to keep DVE on when capturing and saving your snapshot memories so that the effect properly animates or transitions the way you might visualize and intend it to. Use the last memory for this series as an easy way to get out of that look and reset your assigned video sources within the keyer. I like to typically return the TD to background switching only. The way this series would work is first a two-box shot is called up and previewed. During that time, the TD has the option to change the video source assigned to each of the keyers. Remember, it's the keyer that's positioned so none of the positioning or sizing data will be lost if the video source is changed. Next, that build is ready to go on air, so all a TD would have to do is transition to it using the T-bar, cut, or auto transition buttons. At the conclusion of the show's block or rundown item, the TD can then reset the keyers, but only after the build is off the program screen and has been returned to preview. Of course, there's much more further customization available, but hopefully that gives you a brief overview so you can take it from there when building your own memories.